do you know that we had to dedicate a whole video just to talk about the rulings of the Sharia law on food consumption? Yes, you heard it correctly, just food consumption. In this video, you're going to learn 26 verses and authentic hadith that will show you the halal way when it comes to food consumption. So bring your coffee and let's start. Did you know that according to Lancet magazine and World Health Organization, obesity and diseases linked to it are now killing more people than hunger? Only lately we were able to see the devastating effect of food overconsumption on our health. But the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, addressed these issues 1,400 years ago. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, There is no container to be filled that is more evil and more harmful to you than your stomach. Don't eat until you're completely full. Little bites are enough to provide you with the energy you need. Think about it like third for your food, third for your water, and third for your breath. Don't eat until you can't breathe anymore. Number two. One of the things that I learned from my doctor is if I eat while sitting on a comfortable couch watching YouTube, that will automatically make me eat more than I need and of course lead to obesity. The interesting thing is, while I was browsing through some hadith books, I found this hadith saying the exact same thing. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, taught us that whenever we are eating, we shouldn't be lying back in a relaxed position. Subhanallah. Number three. We can find a very clear command from God to stop over consumption in chapter seven, verse 31. Children of Adam, look good when you go to the mosque. Eat and drink, but do not overconsume, because God does not love people who overconsume. Number four. In this hadith, the Prophet said, the believers fills one stomach, while the disbelievers fills more. Understand? The believer fills one stomach, which is enough to give him energy to worship God for the next couple of hours, while the disbelievers eat for the sake of enjoying eating to fulfill his desires. And this is not what we do. Number five, the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said about that, whoever gets used to food overconsumption, his heart will harden. So stay away from it. And brothers and sisters, you all know what happens to us in Ramadan. When we eat a lot in iftar, breaking the fast with three meals in one, you know, after exactly one hour, you try to go to the mosque for tarawih prayer, no matter how hard you try to focus or be humble in your prayer, you can't. No way. These bad habits of overconsumption came to us from the West. We shouldn't be learning their bad habits and applying it to our lives without thinking about it, right? Okay, now we understand that the sunnah is eating less. Eating what your body needs, not what you desire to eat. Let's add one more important ruling. Sharing. Number six. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, You're not a real believer if you are full while your neighbor is hungry. This hadith summarizes both concepts. Eat less, share more. Number seven. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, The food of one person is enough for two. And the food of two people is enough for four. And the food of four people is enough for eight. Again, this hadith summarizes both concepts. Eat less, share more. You are what you eat. We all heard this phrase in food science documentaries. Healthy diet awareness started being public knowledge lately. Living a healthy life is a global trend in the last 30 to 40 years, right? But did you know that all of these teachings were taught by God and the Prophet of God 1,400 years ago? For example, number eight. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, taught us that God loves the strong, healthy believer more than he loves the weak, unhealthy one. So take care of your health. You're commanded by God to take care of your health. It's not your personal choice. Number nine. The Prophet taught us to take care of our health and to ask God to keep our health for us. Again, another command. Number 10. 
The Prophet taught us that our health is a trust, and everyone will be asked on the day of judgment about his health. How and why did he ruin it? Did he ruin it for a good cause, or did he ruin it smoking? Number 11. God taught us that it's haram to inflict harm on someone, and it is haram to inflict harm on yourself. So, if you know that eating a lot of fast food will inflict harm on yourself, then know that this is something that you're gonna be asked about on the Day of Judgment. Number 12. You can find the same meaning in Quran chapter 2 verse 195. God is commanding all the believers not to harm themselves in any way. Number 13. You will find the same meaning again in chapter 7 verse 157. We lately learned that we should preserve our health by keeping our food clean, our house clean, our hands clean, and so on. But did you know that all of these teachings were taught by God and the Prophet of God 1,400 years ago? Number 14. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, taught us to cover our food containers and to close the water vessels. Don't leave them open for contamination. Number 15. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, taught us not to blow in water vessels or breathe in them especially if they are used by multiple people. Number 16. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, taught us to wash our hands and to use the left hand for cleaning ourselves after the bathroom and the right hand for eating and for shaking hands and so on. Remember we talked about this in details in the hygiene episode? The Prophet's genius idea for disease control before the availability of soap and other detergents? If you missed it, I will leave a link for it in the description below. Very nice episode. Anyway, back to our video. Number 17. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, also taught us not to leave food crumbs on the floor after we finish eating. Combine that with all the obligatory wudu and showers that we talked about in the hygiene episode, you have a clean body, clean hands, clean food, clean house. Let's talk about etiquette. And no, we didn't learn etiquette from the British royal family. We learned etiquette from the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. Number 18. When food is prepared, don't start eating alone before everyone. No. Call all family members first to the table, thank God for his provision, say bismillah and start eating. Number 19. If you are sharing a dish with people, don't take food from the middle of the dish or from any random place. Disgusting. Take food only from in front of you. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, taught this boy to eat from in front of him and to eat with his right hand. Same teaching. If you are eating with your hand, don't eat with ten fingers. Three fingers are enough. If you're invited to a dinner at someone's house, let's say at your in-laws, and you don't like the food, you don't have to tell your mother-in-law that her food tastes bad. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, never in his life said any negative word about any food. If he liked it, he would eat it. If not, he won't. Finally, we need to address what is permissible to eat and drink and what is not. And the answer is very, very simple. Everything is halal except the following. Number one, anything that numb or intoxicate your brain or hinder your cognitive abilities in any way. Call it whatever you want. Number two, pork. Pork meat pork fats, pork anything, anything that was manufactured using pork. Take care of the gelatin, it's in a lot of products. Number three, lahm al-jalala, which is the meat of any other animal that was eating najas before it was slaughtered. Generally, pigs are famous for eating their own feces, yes. But sometimes, other animals do that too. And you have to make sure that this animal that is about to be slaughtered didn't do that before eating it. Number four, blood. It is haram to consume blood, whether directly drinking it or indirectly by eating non-halal meat. When an animal is slaughtered in the halal way, all the blood rush outside of the neck in minutes after slaughter. Then the muscles become clean from any blood and become safe to eat. This is halal meat. But if the animal was electrocuted or died of a natural cause or whatever, the blood and all of its toxins stays inside and you end up consuming it. The topic of halal meat has a lot of very important details. 
I will make a separate video to talk about that. Subscribe so you won't miss it. And if you think that this content is useful, make sure you help it spread to other people. You can help it spread by liking it or by sharing it with your friends. And if you want to learn more about Sharia Law, check out this playlist. Thanks and Assalamu alaikum.